Hello and welcome to my first YouTube live, guys. This um, presentation may not be technologically the best because it's my first live, but I can guarantee you that you'll learn something about how to do a loan signing. I also want to give you a disclaimer that I do not teach anything on my channel. I just share my experiences. So don't come at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just um, a loan signing agent who, who has probably done a few more signings than you have. And so I feel that I would have been, you know, felt a lot better about my first signing if I had gotten somebody to show me how to do it or how they do it. And that's the reason I'm doing this today. And Shelby here is a loan signing agent as well. And she is so gracious and so pretty and she is helping me. Um, she's going to pretend to be the signer. I'm, I'm going to start from the basics. When I get a um, loan signing assignment, the first thing you're supposed to do is confirm with your signers. Most people will just call them and, you know, just confirm the time and the location, blah, blah, blah. But I send them a text. Um, I send them a text that reminds them to have, like after I have confirmed with them, I ask them, is, is this a good number to text you? And then I'll, I'll send them a text that kind of goes over a few pointers, um, reminding them of their IDs. I have to remind them to put away the pets and please have someone to watch the children. I understand I may be <laughs> a little pushy, but trust me, um, I've heard some horror stories about pets attacking people. You can never predict how an animal behaves. So please, I ask you, um, don't let pets in the room when you are signing. Children, of course, um, <laughs> as long as they behave like, you know, not like my children. Either way. So I, <laughs> I tell them that I tell them that you, you're going to need one hour of un uninterrupted time. I tell them to have blue pens ready because most line, loan signings require a blue pen. But I also have blue pens in my in my bag right here. So I'll also show you what's in my bag. Um, I have them as a backup. What else do I tell them? Um, I'll post it later, um, the text that I send them. Then once I arrive at the house, um, I have um, I have this. <laughs> I have never needed it. Do you guys know what this is? Make? Yeah, something like that. I don't know how to use it. Well, I shouldn't have said that, but OK. So I, uh, I take that with me. And when I was new, I was a little scared that I'm going to be um, how, how am I going to be safe? How am I going to be comfortable entering someone's house, especially when it's dark and stuff? But please understand that by the time that you are at their house, their lenders know you are there, your signing service knows you are there, the escrow officer knows you are there, a lot of people know that you're there. And the moment um, you start the signing, I'll tell you what else to do that will ensure that everyone knows who, where you are. Um, you have their IDs. Um, you have all the information. So most of the times, I think it's 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 presumed safe to enter their house at that point. I also leave the uh, GPS turned on on my phone. That way, everybody knows where I'm at. All right, so once we uh, I enter someone's house, this is very important. Don't let them tell you to sit at the coffee table. Um, insist if you can. You, or or very, very politely, I tell them, do you have an island that we can stand at? Or do you have a, a dining table that we can sit at? Because it's going to be extremely difficult to handle all these documents hunched down. You know, your backs are going to hurt. You, you just politely tell them. I do tell them, and it has happened many times. Once someone asked me to do this in the garage, and I politely said, can we go to the nearest um, McDonald's? I don't like going to Starbucks because they have small tables. But... Uh, there's McDonald's everywhere, so I'll I'll request us to go there because I don't want to be um, standing in the rain or in the dark or in the wind um, when the documents can blow away. That it's it's complex, so don't be afraid to set the tone in the room and don't be afraid to make sure that they know that you are the leader in this uh, meeting. So once they bring me to the table, I choose a spot which is backed up to the wall or some place where I know that nobody can come up behind me. This is another safety thing that I practice. I'm not going to sit where I, wouldn't, I would have to pay attention to who's behind me. I mean, you can help it most of the times, but sometimes you can't. Then you just have to be vigilant about it. But I make sure that I sit in a spot that is backing to a place I don't have to be afraid someone coming from the back. Um, 
the other thing that i do is i so if it's a rectangular table like this i will sit on one side of the table i will ha have the first signer sit at the head of the table and the second signer sit over there um, next to them. I, I do it this way, but this time I sat this side, um, but because I like to have my notary journal to my left, um, to my right. And over here, since she's at my, at my right, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to, it will get in the way. So ideally I have them both on my left, but in this case, we have them to the right. Okay, so once we start, here's what I mentioned about the safety, how, uh, what I do. So it's, it's time for me to check their ID. So I'll say, hey, so let me start with your IDs. <clears throat> so once they hand me their ID, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the, I'm already logged into the app. If it's Snapdocs or if it's um, signing, um, what's that, signing order? So I'm already logged into the app. What I will do is I will, take a picture through the app when I got there, when I start this. Now everybody knows that the app knows or the app knows that I, I'm here at whatever 7 p.m. and these are the people I'm with. So here's another security trick for you that you probably won't know. So, and this, is, this also saves you the hassle of uh, them having to give you copies of the pictures if they didn't have a copier or you having to make copies of the picture or you having copies of the picture on your phone and then you forgot to upload them or whatever. Now it's a security issue because you are carrying their personal information on your phone. So just go ahead <coughs> and log into Snapdocs or whatever, click the, uh, click the add files app um, button and then click the camera, take their picture. And then I will put their ID on one side I always want to have their ID with me. They will ask me to give them their ID back, but I will, I'll be like, I'm gonna need it because you are going to need it later on. You don't wanna keep having to ask them about it. Okay, then what I do before the signing, uh, I forgot to mention, is I'll take make the two copies of the documents. One of the copies, so I'll put rubber bands around all of uh, around both of them, and I will put them in my reusable or my FedEx envelope. This is for smaller packets and this is for packets over 100 and 150 pages. And then I also have the, the envelopes. The, this, this takes the FedEx label inside it and this sticks to the envelope right here. Now, if you open a FedEx.com account, you can order these envelopes and these and these for free. So that's that. And now once we, once I have their ID, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my notary journal. And I would like to talk about this notary journal because usually it's a single um, entry per line notary journal. And if you are um, making, um, every notarization you do needs to be entered in the notary journal for every single signer. So if you have 15 notarizations during this loan signing, and if you have two signing signers, that's 30 entries in your notary journal. And if you take about 30 seconds per entry, then it's gonna be 15 minutes of your time just to enter all this redundant information over and over. And that's the reason why I use uh, multiple documents notary journal. I just enter the information once here, up here the date and the address of the closing and the property location and the signer's name and blah, blah, blah. And then whenever I notarize a document, I either check A for acknowledgement and J for jurat. And I have three designs in this journal, just so you know, I am the one who designed this journal. So these two, this is my least favorite one. I, I mean, I thought it was, I was gonna like it, but somehow I didn't like it much, um, but they're all the same. This is a hundred pages, this is 200 pages, and I will link it in, the description. All right. So now that you're going to get started, you're going to take the ID and you are going to fill out this information, the date of the notarization, um, closing address, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to um, write their names. So the way that you write their names is how it appears on the ID. I know that sometimes the documents will have their names typed a different way, but don't do that. Type, uh, write it down in your journal, just exactly like it appears on their ID. And then over here, you'll ask them if their mailing address is the same as the address that uh, is on the ID. And then you'll ask them to sign here. <coughs> so that's done. Now I'm gonna show you 
my favorite thing is this. I cannot operate without this. So then I'll put this on here and my journal goes here after they have signed it. And then I have my stamp which goes on top of my journal and I have my pen. And if they don't have their pens already, then I will hand them a pen or I'll give each one of them pens to write with. Now here are some extra stamps that I have, which if you want, you can use it. I ordered these, but I always have a hard time lining them up with, with the line. So I never use them. This is a date stamp for the day. The, these are both date stamps. One is for the day that we are signing. One is my expiration date. I don't use them. And then this is just my name, name stamp. And all these stamps, remember, you have to have in black ink because um, um, you don't know whether they're going to ask for blue ink or black ink for the things that you fill in. So use black ink for them. Your personal, uh, your notary stamp, it can be red, blue, whatever. Mine is red. Okay. Okay, Shelby, are you ready to get started? I am. So now we're going to pretend to be, um, I'm the loan signing agent and Shelby is my signer. All right, so, uh, Shelby, go ahead and sign your name right there. Um, and Let when you sign, name. no, <laughs> she's pretending. Okay. So, <laughs> but on these documents, you can sign because okay. just say thank you or something. Just okay. pretend you're uh, signing. So um, when they start signing, I look at their signature and I match it with their driver's license and make sure that it matches. And then I tell them, Shelby, um, although you signed here like your driver's license, please make sure that on the documents you sign exactly like your signature line says. That is what most lenders request. Some people will argue, that's not my signature. That's not how I usually sign. Don't argue with them. Just you did your job of telling them. Um, you say, okay, that's fine. That's up to you. But the lender requests that your signatures match exactly like your signature line. But then you don't force them. You do what they do, um, whatever they want to do. All right. Um, another thing that I do is I have a, um, a business card. I don't know where it's at, but I have a business card. And what I do is I turn it um, uh, around and I write the date on that business card and I set it in front of them. That way I don't have to constantly keep reminding of the, uh, them of the date and they understand what is the format of the date. Most of the times you have to, you should make sure that they write all four digits of the year. This started in the year 2020. Doesn't really apply anymore but why mess with why, why take a chance you know so just do that okay so we're going to start we are going to start with the closing disclosure okay so this is your closing disclosure this is your loan amount that is your interest rate that's your monthly principal and interest payment those are your estimated taxes and insurance those two together those two together make up your total monthly payment and this is your cash to close that is the line all the way on the bottom now, how are you going to pay the cash to close today? Do you have a cashier's check or are you going to wire the money? Cashier's check. Okay, let me have that cashier's check right now so that I don't forget that later. So she gave me a cashier's check. Okay, and then I set it here because if you don't do it at this time, you you might forget. I, I will forget for sure. So now that you have looked at your closing disclosure, Shelby, go ahead and sign. You're going to sign the fourth page of the closing disclosure. Go ahead and sign here and put the date and the date today is 12, what is the date today? 12.05.2021. Make sure you put all four digits of the year, Shelby. Don't sign, just say thank you. Oh. <laughs> or just say whatever. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> We're having too much fun. I hope you guys are having fun too. Okay. Um, so, I take my job seriously, y'all. <laughs> yes, I do too. <laughs> Um, so what I do is when, once they sign, I, I quickly look at it and I put it down on this side. Um, I make sure that it's correct, but I do um, two or three times checking that they have done, that we have not missed anything. So this is the first time is when they're signing, I'm looking at what they're signing and what they're writing, or at least I'm trying to. Okay, next is a settlement statement. Sorry, did you have a question? Did you already pass it, the APR? APR. Yeah, you, you did, but that's okay. You can okay. ask it another time. Uh, so this is your settlement statement. Um, this goes over all your debits on one side and all your credits next to it. And then it goes over to the next page and it balances it out in the bottom. And as you can see here, that is the number of the cashier's check you gave me. That was your closing cost. 
once you've taken a look at it, go ahead and sign here on the last page and make sure you sign your name exactly like it is printed on your documents. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Okay, this is your refinance closing affidavit. This just shows all the documents that, that are the disclosures that you must have received or we are going to sign today. Go ahead and put your initials on every spot that says borrower's initials. So there's two initials on this page. There is two initials on three initials on this page. Now remember, if there are two signers, if there's a husband and a wife, uh, sometimes they are both the borrowers. Uh, and sometimes there's only one borrower. But in some states, even if there is only one of them is a borrower, um, like Texas, the wife and her, uh, wife does get her name on the deed. So they both um, have to sign certain documents. So on these things where you see the initial here things, go to the last page and see if it's just one borrower signing that document or two borrowers signing that document. And if you see both of them are signing that particular document, then they will both initial it. Um, I mean, there's two initial initial spots right there. So they'll both initial it if they are both signing that document. So then you'll, you'll go through that and then you'll go ahead, go ahead and sign here on the last page and then I'm gonna notarize this document. So now she, as she's signing, I'm going to look here on, on this page and I'm going to find the refinance affidavit, um, closing affidavit. And I'm going to see if this says, if my notary block here, this is my notary block. If my notary block says acknowledged, then that means it's an A for acknowledgement on my notary journal. Or if it says sworn and subscribed, then it's a jurat for which I have to take an oath. Um, or they have to take an oath, I have to administer an oath. And then it, in that case, it's a J that I will check on this. So this one is um, just an acknowledgement. But what I do at this point is I write, just so that I'm reminded of this, I write oath, question mark. And then I'll say, I need to administer an oath. Do you swear, do you mind putting your right hand up, please? So I will say, do you swear under the penalty of perjury that whatever you're signing here with me today is true to the best of your knowledge? Yes. And then they'll say whatever, uh, most likely they'll say yes. And then in front of them, I'll write yes here. And here's the reason why. I have gone to many notarizations, uh, closings where people will tell me that, oh, this is the first time we're doing this. Nobody ever asked us to take an oath before. Trust me, if it's a jurat and you haven't administered an oath, and you get called to court one day, your notarization is null and void and you can get in trouble for it. Um, so make sure that if there is any jurats in here and most of them will have it, so it's better to just acknowledge, uh, administer it an oath and make sure you write that yes right here and they see you wrote down, down that yes, that way they can't contest in court tomorrow and say, oh, she never administered an oath for us because you they just saw you write down the, the yes. And then on this document right here, where do you see sworn or acknowledged? So on this document, it says, <clears throat> okay, on this document, it says on, I can't read it, on, so that would be the date on, let me fill it out and then I will tell you. Okay. Okay, I, I just did all this because just for privacy. So anyway, so on this document it says on, so you would put this date and then before me, that's my name. <laughs> I, I just did a scribble, but that's my name. Appeared, uh, notary public personally appeared and who is appearing bef before me is Shelby. So I'll write her name in that blank. And if there's two people, I'll write both of their names, depending on how many people signed that document. Okay, appeared, who proved to me on the basis of satisfactory evidence to be persons whose names are subscribed to the within instrument and acknowledged to me. So do you see the word acknowledged right there? So that's how you know it's an acknowledgement and I'll show you when it is a jurat as well. Um, so then that's what you do. You you fill out the blanks and anytime, sometimes these blocks are differently worded and I'll do a video about how to play with different blocks, but then you sign your name here and you have to sign your name just like it 
appears on your your um, stamp. So, and then you go ahead and stamp over here where it says seal, seal, seal. If you see the word seal next to people's signature, it just means signature. So don't let that throw you off. Okay, this is your residential real property affidavit. And it says T47, guys. It's called a residential real property affidavit. Um, this is just saying that the last survey that was done on this house is current. So sometimes there will be a blank in this, um, which says since they need to either put the date of the last survey, or if they don't remember and they never did any um, thing that would require a new survey, like you know replatting, um, then they would put the month and year when they purchased the house. So um, I asked them to fill that blank. This one doesn't have that. Then go ahead and sign here on the next page and sign your name exactly like it appears. OK, so guys, once you've seen them sign it, look at this one. This says, subs okay, what does it say? Subscribe Subscribed and sworn. sworn. So there you go. That's your, that's your uh, hint that it's a J, that is a Jurat. So. That's what you'll do. You'll fill that out as, as a jurat, and then you will mark the J. And if you're using the traditional journal, I'm sorry, you're going to have to make an, the entry again, date of notarization, closing address, property address, type of closing, signer's name, ID type, signer's address, and sign, signer's signature. So you'll do that for every single signer if you are using the traditional journal. <laughs> I'm not trying to toot my horn, but hey. <laughs> OK. Um, Tell me if I'm not funny. I mean, you guys can tell me that I'm not funny. and I, I think I am. OK, next one is the Texas disclosure. This discloses certain fees that are already disclosed in your closing disclosure and your uh, settlement statement. But Texas needs its own disclosure for certain fees. So that's what they're doing here. Once you've looked at it, please go ahead and sign here on the last page. OK. All right, thank you so much. OK, this is your marital. And um, this one is not notarized. This is your marital status affidavit. Go ahead and uh, check the boxes that apply to you and fill in the blanks that go with it. And then sign here on the bottom. Make sure you sign exactly like your name is printed. The marital status affidavit is um, a notarized do document most of the time. So then you will, you will do the notarization part. And then you will enter it in your journal. Uh, or you can check the J for jurat or A for acknowledgment. This is your homestead affidavit. So if, they're, if it's their homestead, they'll have a homestead affidavit. If it's a non-homestead or investment property, a non-homestead affidavit. Uh, again, this is um, this is um, a notarized uh, document. Go ahead and please sign your name there. And then I will circle A or J, and then I will complete the notarization. And then you'll have some pages that says notary instructions. I'm just going to skip through these. Um, sometimes you'll have what is called as a funding disbursement page. Let's see, there's no personal information. Funding disbursement, and if they're not getting any money back or if this is not something a, a seller, then that doesn't apply to them. So just skip right through that document. Okay, we have another text disclosure. We're gonna skip through that. Uh, well, you won't skip through that in an actual loan signing. If if there are duplicates duplicates of the same documents, um, you'll sign every single one of them. Don't skip anything. Um, and then there is this is a long title document. So things like this, I literally just briefly outline the headline. This is an understanding and indemnity about COVID nineteen. So don't think you're supposed to explain documents. Again, this is why we are making this video, because you're not supposed to explain the documents. You're not an attorney. You are just briefly introducing the purpose of the document. OK, go ahead and sign this document right here. This is a notarized document, and I'm going to enter it in my journal. OK, then you are going to see a page like this. And this is usually, <clears throat> usually followed by a whole bunch of pages that are called the data proof entry sheet, blah, blah, blah. So that's at least like five to 10 pages that you can just literally skip through. Those You don't do anything on those. OK, so the next one is your deed of trust. This is a security instrument. So point to the word that is bolded. It says security instrument and tell them this. This is a security instrument that gets tied to the note that you're going to sign today, and it gets recorded in the county under your names right here. And you'll point to their names next to the word that's bolded that says borrower. And then sometime, be extremely careful about this. 
sometimes the deed of trust and the note will have initials on the bottom of the page. So please, every single time you have a deed of trust and or and a note, please make sure you look if they need to be initialed. Um, and all the riders will also need initials most of the times if the deed is initial. Riders are the planned unit development rider, um, the investment property rider, and a couple of other riders. But OK, so this is your deed of trust. You're going to initial every single page uh, on the bottom. So go ahead and initial the bottom of that page. And we're just going to skip because you got the point. Um, so you will see at the bottom of I, I, I see at the bottom of this, it says 10 pages. So I'm just skipping to the 10th page. And then you actually said it. I actually said it in front of them. And I say, this is your deed of trust. This, trust. this is a security instrument that gets tied to the note and gets recorded in the county under your names. Please go ahead and sign. Huh? OK, <laughs> um, maybe not this one, <laughs> because then we would have to call. I'll address that, though. Uh, please go ahead and sign on the last page. And deed and note, note is never dated unless it specifically says that. Deed sometimes is and sometimes isn't. Just pay attention to it. Um, what shall be just mentioned is what happens if your name is spelled wrong. Now, if your name is spelled wrong in a deed, call title immediately. Um, Sometimes they will tell you to ask the borrower to just cross out the incorrect spelling and spell it correctly um, and then initial. But don't do this without um, checking with title. And then the deed is a notarized document. So go ahead and while they are signing the, their part, go ahead and start filling out your part on the notary block. And then you enter that in your journal. OK, this is your planned unit development rider or the PUD rider. Since your house is in a PUD, it may have a subdivision and it may have covenants and restrictions. Please uh, initial the bottom of that page. And then please go ahead and sign and date this page. The date is 12.05.2021, all four digits of the year, please. And please make sure you also initial the bottom of that page. OK, then we have your note. And you're going to see these things bolded most of the time, what I'm going to tell her. So this is how it goes. This is your note. This is your promise to pay the loan. And that every word I'm saying, guys, it's literally written here. It's bolded. I'm not making anything up or most of the things. My my crappy jokes, I make those up. But <laughs> I, this I'm not making up. <laughs> so this is um, this is your note. This is your promise to pay the loan in that amount to that mortgage company. That's your interest rate. That's when your first payment is due. That's when your last payment is due. That's where the payments go to. That's the principal and interest only part of your payment. And there are some more terms of your note over the next couple of pages. Go ahead and initial the bottom of this page. Again, not every time is a note in uh, needing initial on every pages, but make sure you check because if you miss it, it's not, it's not fun. Um, go ahead and in initial that page, please. And it is kind of like, I can see how it'd be easy to, easy to miss to because miss. If you show them, like show them on the screen, uh -huh. if you see like, like the initials are right there, but then there's writing underneath it. Right. So it's, it doesn't stand out, you know? Uh -huh. And one time I had, actually last week, um, I had one where um, it wasn't even like this and I'm used to seeing it like this. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just written in the middle of the document on the bottom initials. And I almost missed it, but just be careful. Initials are important. OK, so the next one is um, is your is your loan application. Guys, this is the, I can't show you, sorry. Um, uniform residential loan application. It says boldly on top of the document. Um, so on the last mock loan signing video that I have done, we used to have a different uh, form for the loan application. Now the loan application form is a little different, and I like it. It's nothing bad. But just um, update that information with this information. Um, this is your loan application. You already signed this when you started this process, but this is just a final typed version of it. Um, and they, they need your wet signatures on this. And guys, I'm going to try to show you this. But <laughs> this is hard. OK, OK, so if you look here, that's where it's it says whether they are applying for joint credit or uh, individual credit. And if it says I'm applying for individual credit, then 
they don't do anything on this page but if it says i'm applying for joint credit then it says your initials right below it and they will both initial that page and i tell them in case in case that's the case i tell them this is your page i point to the box 1a where it says personal information which has their name and i tell them each one of you is going to have your own page and uh, shall be this is your page so it says that you're applying for joint credit please go ahead and both of you need to initial in this case it's not joint credit so she's not going to uh, initial that so then you're going to say so you're going to sign this document here most likely it's page number 6 go ahead and sign your name here and please date in that format only because guys if you look on the this loan application there's a date format are we are we on time yeah <clears throat> okay so then that one's done usually it goes a lot faster i'm just talking a lot this time to help you guys so that's why it takes time okay Notice of right to cancel, extremely important that you watch them like a hawk doing this because if they sign in the wrong spot, the loan can get canceled. This is how I explain it. And again, everything I'm saying is bolded out or written in this document. I'm not making anything up. This is your notice of right to cancel. You have three days to cancel this loan. Today is July 13th, 2021 or no. December. Okay, that day th this document was from. Me. Okay, <laughs> today is December um, 5th, 2021. You have till um, December, midnight of December, whatever, to cancel this loan. That date will be printed in the box. If you wish to cancel, please, uh, you will sign here and date and then send it to this address. But today you are only acknowledging that you received this notice. So please don't sign here in this box. You're going to sign all the way on the bottom and put your date over there in the format of 12 or 5 2021 and then you watch them sign it and so what i do um what 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 you're supposed to do is give them two copies leave them two copies of the right to cancel but since i made them an identical copy of these documents sometimes if there are even six of these in this loan packet i'll get them to sign all of them and i'll put them back with this and i will send it back to the um, title company Okay, then this is then you will see a document called the Patriot Act information. Now, since you're new, um, you can stop right here and you can say, give me one second, you can pick up their driver's license. And on this form, you are filling this out with their um, identification. You have to look on this form in the top paragraph. Sometimes it will say one forms of identification, one form of ID or two forms of ID. Make sure that you look every single time and if they want a second form of ID at this point, you can ask the borrower to give you another form of ID. And there is a list of documents here that can be used as a second form of ID. It's right on this form. So what I do is I put this form away and I fill it out when they are reading something for too long or something like that. But if you're new and you don't want to be doing multitasking, just go ahead and fill this out right now and then you continue this is your affidavit of occupancy this states right here so it will have boxes checked it states right here that this is your primary residence and you're refinancing it only please go ahead and sign and date 1205 2021 and then this is a notarized form you do your notarization and then you fill out your notary journal okay then we have your amortization schedule it looks something like this um, so sometimes the amortization schedule will need a signature, sometimes it won't. So please make sure you check on the last page. This one does. You will say, this is your amortization schedule. This shows you how your payment gets applied over the term of the loan towards your interest and your principal. Go ahead and sign and date. Perfect. Um, then we have the first payment letter. This is your first payment letter. This shows you the amount of your first payment right there. It shows you when your first payment is due right there. It shows you a little bit about your loan. And then on the next page, you have a couple of temporary payment stubs to make those payments if you haven't set up any payment by then. Go ahead and sign and date. All right. Okay, okay, all right. Initial escrow account disclosure statement. This is your escrow account snapshot for the first year for your estimated taxes and insurance. You're going to sign here on the next page. Please go ahead and sign and date.
Okay, notice of furnishing negative information. This is a notice that they have a right to furnish negative information about you to the credit bureaus in case there are payment issues. Go ahead and sign and date. Okay, then you'll see something like the tax record information sheet. You're gonna skip through it. Um, then the Texas collateral protection insurance requirement. This is a, this, um, okay, I'm lost. <laughs> this is about your collateral insurance. Since this house is a collateral for this loan, you agree to keep it insured and take good care of it. Go ahead and sign and date. This is a notice that there are no oral agreements. Everything has to be in writing. Go ahead and sign and date. Okay, this is a notice of penalties for making false or misleading statements. Go ahead and sign and date. This is a notarized document. Document, once she's done with it, you're going to um, sign and notarize and enter it. Now, Shelby's going to pretend that she's a reader and she's going to start reading this document. So this is what I do. Um, there are a few ways I handle readers. My first thing that I want to do when people start reading a document is I want to pick up this stack, which... So, so did you notice that as I'm giving her the documents, when she signed it, I put it upside down towards the left of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this, this stack over and I'm going to start looking through for errors and mistakes. So she's reading, she's reading, she's reading. I've looked so, so now she stopped. Once she stops reading, I just put this sta stack all the way to the left. I turn this stack back upside down and I continue. So anytime I get a break, I'm looking through the documents. So that's the second time I'm checking for errors. Now say that um, I have already done this and now she's reading again. So then I will say, uh, please uh, know that I'm going to leave you a copy of all these documents to review after we are done signing. If there is any issues, please make sure that you reach out to the lender within the three days that you have to, the right to cancel. Not all loans have the right to cancel, but I have to remind them that they have a copy of these documents. That's the first thing I do. Um, what is the next thing I do? If, if, if they're still persisting on reading, well, not in the same instance, but if we go through a few more documents, they start reading again. Then I say, <clears throat> and most of, most of the times it's true, I will say I do have uh, to leave by 6.30 because I have another closing. So if you would like to read everything in detail, then we would have to reschedule. Most of the times that'll, um, that, that'll help. Um, and what else can I do? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, readers, um, I, I, I understand that they need to read these documents, but, but most of the time they should have reviewed the documents before, uh, before the closing. But sometimes it's not their fault. The lenders haven't provided them with the documents, and this is the first time they're seeing it. In that case, you really can't do anything about it. Okay, now I've got to start over. <laughs> Just for that, starting over. No. Okay. So Sorry, now we continue. It. So she stopped reading and she's... It's <laughs> what? It's notarized. Okay, yeah. So this is a notarized document, notice of penalties. Um, and then I will check it in, uh, check an A or a J. Um, sometimes if there are two of the same document in my journal, I just write multiplied by two in front of the same document. This is a renewal and extension exhibit. This acts as a bridge between the old deed that was recorded in the county and the new one that we signed today. Go ahead and sign and date. Okay, how did you, where did you get that information from? Which information? This acts as a bridge. It's it's how I introduced the document. Okay. I heard somebody do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good but, piece of information. But if you, if you look in the, in the bolded part, this is not worded very well, but if you look on the renewal and extension exhibit, there is, uh, it, is it, it does state it right here. It states the last deed that was recorded in the county. See the, here in 2018, mm -hmm. volume, whatever, off page, this of that official public records so okay. you kind of know that this is this was the last deed that was recorded in the county by that but they're never going to ask you that okay this just acts as a bridge to carry over okay okay all right so then you have the authorization for social security administ i'm reading the title guys literally this is what i do you need to pay that okay so the question that um I can't read. Sadia asked, this is a type of question that if they ask you, this is what I'll say. I'm so sorry, I am not authorized to answer that question. You will address that question with your lender. If you like, you can make a phone call after our closing or if you want it answered right now, did you want to call them? Because you are not supposed to answer these kind of questions. You don't tell them about their, um, because you're not an attorney. So 
I'm, I'm very happy that you asked that question because that's what this closing is about, is to reiterate that as a notary, all our job is, is to present documents. Our job is not to um, practice law. Thank you, Saria. You are golden. OK, um, so now we are on this next document, authorization for Social Security Administration to release your information. It's valid for 90 days. Again, I'm pointing it out in the document. It's always valid for 90 days, but you can see uh, I have never found one that's less. And then so it's valid for 90 days. Um, if you want to change that, you can put that in this in this box. Um, initial here, sign and date, please. 12.05.2021. This is your W-9 for tax purposes. Please make sure your social security number is typed correctly here and go ahead and sign and date right there. So this document is called Hazard uh, Insurance Authorization Requirements and Disclosure. Uh, this is what I, uh, I tell them about it. This is about the insurance requirements for uh, by your lender. Go ahead and sign and date on the next page. Um, Sonia was asking, she says, I'm asking about the document. Someone told me that, but I don't know what document that is. Um, Sadia, let's hold that off to the, um, after the, um, after we get through these documents and because I can't really read, um, your comment very well. And I'm kind of like distracted with doing this. So let's talk about it as soon as we're done. We're almost done just a little bit left. Okay. So I'll come back to that. All right, so this is your compliance agreement. Um, go ahead and sign and date here. And this is um, a notarized document. You will notarize it, and then you will enter it in your journal. This is a flood hazard determination of your property. Go ahead and sign and date. This is a notice of servicing transfer. It tells you that this was your loan servicer before, and now it's going to be this. I know that it's the same name, but it's, it must be a different servicing uh, sister of that company. Go ahead and sign and date the next page. Next is the borrower certification and authorization. This is your certification that you did apply for this loan, and everything is true. Um, your authorization for release of information and what kind of loan this is. Please go ahead and sign and date. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Sadia. Okay, so then you have your signature affidavit. This lists some of the names that are variations of your names. If there are none listed, you can say uh, say to them that if you want to add any AKAs, you can do that. Um, but here are some of the variations of your name. If you don't agree with any of them, please strike through it and put an initial. And once you are done looking at all these variations, please go ahead and sign here on the bottom and date. And then this is a notarized document. Oh, sorry, were you looking at something? Mm -mm. Okay. This is a notarized document. Um, enter that in your journal after you notarize it. See how many times you have to enter it in your journal? Am I like a shameless uh, promoter of my journal? Well, I bought her journal too, after I bought <laughs> another journal. So. All right, so this is your Equal Opportunity Act notice, um, Equal Credit Opportunity Act notice. Sign and date, please. What is it? Do you do better if you know better? <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe, do, maybe sometimes you do better. Do better when you know better. I think is how it goes. Okay. All right. So this is your consent for the use of your tax return information. Go ahead and sign and date. Then we have it's called the four five zero six, and it is. This is how I explain it. This is a request for the transcripts of your tax returns, and that is the title of the document, guys. Just read the titles of the documents. You're not supposed to say too much. You're not an attorney. Again, um, this is a request for the transcripts of your tax returns of those years. Please go ahead and check this box and sign and date. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. How, do you, how did you know to have them? Check that box. Uh -huh. So, guys, towards the um, towards the bottom of the four five zero six, there is a little box that says signatory attests that he is he and she blah blah blah. Most of the times, that box is checked, but if it's not, make sure that they check that box. Um, and also, if you look in a box number, 
um, four, uh, no, of box number two, it says if this is a joint return, uh, spouse's information needs to be uh, here. If the spouse's information is written in this, then the spouse signs this too. But if not, then don't have them sign it. Um, so the only person who signed this is the one whose name is written on the top of this, uh, of this document. So go ahead and sign a date. And if their phone number is not written over there, typed over there, go ahead and enter your phone number there. All right. And then, guys, we are closer to the end here. This is your document correction agreement. There are a few different formats of this. It can be called a, a, a limited power of attorney or a corrections agreement or an e a, a document correction agreement. If it says the limited power of attorney, I tell them, this is a document correction agreement. You are giving them a limited power of attorney to make any uh, corrections to these documents. It could be grammatical changes or small typographical errors. They cannot change the terms of your loan under this agreement. Please go ahead and sign and date. And this is also a notarized document. And I don't think that I saw that in this packet, but something similar is also called an ENO or errors and omissions. Um, again, the way that I introduce it is I say, uh, this is your errors and omissions agreement. Uh, you agree to um, you agree that if there are any mistakes in these documents, you will sign the corrected documents. So then you will notarize this document and enter it in your journal. Okay, so this is your tangible benefits disclosure. Again, reading the title. Um, this shows you uh, the difference between your current loan and this new loan that we are signing today. And then you can sign here on the next page. All right, this is the acknowledgement of fair market value of your property. Go ahead and sign and date. I'm going to skip this one because it's useless or in my eyes. Um, um, I didn't see the appraisal valuation acknowledgement. If that's in the, in the documents, you will say this is your appraisal acknowledgement. If you had an appraisal done, um, you have a, had a right to receive a copy of it within three days. If not, you waive that. And then they just sign that. Okay, then when you see the attorney documents, you will skip a few and then you will find the attorney representation letter. This is an attorney representation letter. It tells you that this attorney who created these documents, they represent the title company or the lender. They do not represent you. Please go ahead and sign right there. This is your mineral rights acknowledgement. Go ahead and sign and date. This is a good time to make a joke about if you find diamonds in your backyard, just let me know. Don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> this is a notarized document. So you notarize it and you enter it in your journal. Close to the end here. Ew, that's gross. <laughs> okay, this appeared earlier, but again, we have this a second time. This is a collateral protection insurance notice. Since this house is a collateral for the loan, uh, please make sure that it's insured for the lender's requirements and you take good care of it. And this is... So you asked if this is a refinance you're doing? Yes, we are doing a refinance. But most docu most most loans will have similar documents. Remember that your only job is to make sure that you don't miss any signatures, you don't miss any initials, you don't write incorrect dates. And first of all, the main job is to identify the signers and know that they are signing uh, willingly. That's that's it. It's not um, your job to. Um, I lost myself. Okay. I'm getting too old. Okay, so this is a long title. It says borrower affidavit acknowledging lender compliance with federal requirements to provide credit score disclosures. The way I introduce this document is simple. I say, this is you acknowledging that the lender has to comply with um, providing you credit score disclosures. Go ahead and sign and date. Okay. No date, there's no date on that one. Um, and this is a notarized document. So you know, yes, it's here. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's there. It's like written really Yeah, really and and if you ever find any if you are using this journal um and if you find any documents that are not listed here because sometimes there are then oh, there are is. six blank spots that you write it in. She thought of it all. I I tried. I was playing with this journal or using this for 6 months kind of tinkering with it till it you know came on the market. Oh, here it is, the appraisal notification and acknowledgement. 
Okay, so if you had an appraisal done, then you had a right to receive a copy of it within three days. If not, then you waive that right. Please go ahead and sign. And here it is again, the notice of penalty. So for making false or misleading statements, go ahead and sign. This is a notarized document. And this time, this is the second time it appeared here. So I'm going to mark um, times two in front of that. This one, right. Let me see that one. Yeah. Does it have a, oh, acknowledge. Okay. Yeah, it's an acknowledgement. All right. Okay, this is your taxpayer consent form. Again, she has signed this before, but sometimes there are multiple of the same documents. Okay. All right, and then you will see a document called transfer of lien. A lot of new signing agents think that they need to notarize that. But no, this is um, this is the holder of the note, which is the old mortgage company who was holding the old note, just transferring it to the new note holder. It has nothing to do with the signer. So you're not notarizing this page. When you see transfer of lien or elongate to note, just move along. And then last page of the closing package. So now when we are done, I will say, um, if I haven't gone through these already, most of the time by this time, I have already looked through these documents in little breaks. And of course, I had to fill out the Patriot Act disclosure. But at this time, if I haven't already, then I will tell them, if you can give me five minutes, please, I would like to look through and make sure that, that I catch any or errors or missed initials or signatures. And that's when this becomes my best friend. And I'm just going through this very fast and looking through it. And then once I'm done looking through it, I tell them, OK, here's your copy of the documents. And then I put it inside my FedEx envelope. Usually, I have my. Um, Usually I have this already inside this and stuck and everything. So I'm not having to do that at this time. And at this time, if um, you are supposed to scan these documents back, then you won't seal the, the packet. But um, if you are not supposed to scan it, if there's no scan backs, then that's it, you are done. You seal these, this packet back right in front of them. I like to do it. Um, and you pack up. And you can make small talk. <laughs> that's it. So guys, tell me what questions you have. Um, again, a disclaimer, I'm not a teacher. Um, I'm not trying to tell you how to do things. I just try to give you a little bit about my experience about this. So tell me how I can help you. If you have any questions, let me know. This is the time. <laughs> sort quick. Club sort quick. It's disgusting, actually. Like, it's gross. I have licked it once, and it wasn't <laughs> fun. But mm. sort quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What is that thing you're writing thing called? Yeah, thing. sort quick. Yeah. And um, also, like, as soon as I'm done with this, then um, I will go outside and I will check out that way um, of the app. You know, it will say signing oh, yeah. completed. Oh, you're welcome, Dylan. I like to be straightforward and I don't like to uh, add any fluff except for my bad jokes. <laughs> Okay, um, so we'll give it five more minutes if anybody has any questions. Uh, so we, let me get this closer. I can't read. Okay, what does it say? Um, so we just have to give brief description of the documents and then have them sign. You are bang on. That's what you're doing. You're giving a brief description. Um, and also, like I might add about this, you have to find, thank you, Samantha. You have to find a balance between uh, not saying anything and saying too much because this is what happens that if you are going to a loan signing and you don't uh, you kind of just give a document to them and say okay go ahead and sign this now they are wondering what am I signing then they are, they're prompted to read the document so that's going to take forever trust me but if you start this process with the confidence that I know what I'm presenting to you and you say, this is a deed of trust, this is a security instrument, blah, 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 blah. that's a 21 page document. Now they know, they, they know that you know what you're talking about and they know that you already told them what's the purpose of the document. So they feel the, the clarity and they feel the comfort to sign it without having to read it word by word. So that's another thing. Don't say too much, but don't say nothing because if you say nothing, then they're gonna read. You're going to be there for our hour and a half, too. I usually get my signings done within 40 minutes. Okay. 
Okay, what? Yeah, you can point out figures. You just can't explain, you know, mm -hmm. how they got those figures. Yes. Or why the figures are the yes. way they are. Yes, you can't talk about uh, what, uh, you can't talk about why. Um, you can't you can't say oh this is a wonderful interest rate no you can't say that um, uh, you, you can't talk about anything that that can be legal uh, because you are not trained to do that yeah if they ask you to they say oh is that a good interest rate what do you think you yeah. can't say anything. you're gonna be like oh I'm sorry I don't know uh, Sadia you were saying first year taxes upfront what does that mean okay I, okay, someone told me that when a person buys a home that they have to pay a full year of taxes. Oh, uh, okay. Um, now, you're not supposed to answer that question for them. You're supposed to tell them to take the take it up with their lender. But from general knowledge, uh, from, from general knowledge, what I think is um, when you um, get a loan, the escrow includes four numbers. Again, this is not something you're going to discuss with them. This is just because I know and most people know this. The loan numbers include PITI, which is Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance. So um, if you look at the first payment letter or the escrow letter, you will see um, how it breaks down. So if your principal is, you know, your payment is $1,000, it breaks. There are all four things included in that. So they are not paying the first year's taxes up front. They are just paying it every month inside their principal interest taxes and insurance. Um, also, sorry, I was going to say, um, if you buy a home, like, let's say you buy a home midway through the year. So the person selling that home, they're responsible at closing to make sure that their taxes for the first half of the year are paid. Right. Title, make sure that all of that is good on their end. And then your rate, you know, the rest of the taxes for you going forward are basically prorated right. in, into your payment for the re remaining half of the year. So that's how you, right. you know, that's how they figure the taxes there. How can you tell the difference between lender documents and title documents? Why do you have to? You don't have to. You don't have to. Is Are you maybe like for packaging? Is that... Like, no, there's no reason. Even today, if you ask me, I can't tell. I can't really tell you. I, I mean, if you put me uh, to a test, I may think about it, but I never had to think about it. And are the lender documents the docs with the figures such as actual? Well, yes. Um, and I mean, if I had to really say it, then sure, the deed of trust is a title document and the closing disclosure settlement statement and our lender documents. But please, please don't get into this because the more you know, the more you'll be inclined to talk about it with your buyers. You don't want to do it. Do you put the date for the right of cancel or is it already? It's most of the times, uh, well, 99% of the times it's already printed. But if it's not printed or if it's incorrect, um, you have to put it in. Uh, they put it in. Remember, you are not supposed to write anything about their signature or edit anything about their signature. Guys, slow down the questions. I'm, I can't keep track. Just okay. Keeping track. Okay, okay. So, so you are not to um, edit anything about their signature because you are not an attorney. So they will write it in, but you can look it up. So um, you don't have to, like everyone thinks, you don't have to learn the... A rescission calendar just go and google it uh, the nna rescission calendar is the one that i have saved on my phone and if if ever that's an uh, an issue then i will look up the date and i will tell them to put that date over there and initial if it was incorrect and they had to cross it out then they'll initial it which is the next question okay um so uh, you have to pay first your full tax. Okay. But see, Sadia, you're getting into all this, which is not uh, any of our uh, have, concern. Yeah, so Sadia, to answer your question, you do not have to tell the signer that. If they yeah. have questions about their taxes, they're going to have you. You actually cannot tell them anything. You have to be very vague. So. You just have to. Well, you just have to clearly tell them that um, uh, that I'm sorry, I'm not authorized to answer this question. Oh, you know what? Here, I, I didn't tell you this. This is what I sometimes read to my signers when I get to the loan application. I say, and this will answer your question, uh, maybe. I am a notary public for the state of blah blah blah. My job is to screen the signers. Um, of important documents for their true identity. 
as your signing agent for this closing i will briefly present the documents you need to sign and let you know where to sign date and initial my job is also to make sure the title company instructions are followed i am not qualified or authorized to discuss your loan or legal documents in this packet if you should have any questions during this closing which i cannot answer please make a note of it and contact your lender or title company after the closing to discuss them if the question needs immediate answer we will pause the signing and call the person who can address it i will be leaving a copy of all the documents um, we are going to sign so that you may review them at your convenience after the closing so don't get into things that you are not supposed to do again let me reiterate what is our job our job is to identify the signers correctly our job is to witness the signatures our job is to administer an oath our job is to make sure the signer is signing signing willingly and is not um, being intoxicated forced. or oh, yeah. drugged or, or being persuaded or right. coaxed right and also yeah. like one time i had a a lady i went for a closing and she um, she was she had dementia so i had to hold the signing because she was not aware of what i i was what she was doing so mm -hmm. your job is not to know the loan documents your job is not to explain or discuss it your job is only um witnessing the signatures and making sure the people who are signing are the ones named on the documents um the next question was dylan um he says going back to knowing whether the documents are title or the lender um in case there's a question that comes up if you need okay. to contact them okay so them. most of the time the your first point of contact is um the signing service that that hired you so if you're new you're going to be mostly signing for the um uh, through snap docs or a signing company will hire you so you're going to call the signing company and they will tell you who to call uh, they will uh, most of the times they'll have the answer for you if they don't have the answer for you then they will tell you to call mm -hmm. Uh, the lender or the title company. So, but if you can't reach them, the next person to call would be the title company. And if you can't reach them either, then the next person to call would be the lender. Um, and if you can't reach any one of them, then you leave a message, you wait for some time, and then you, uh, if you can proceed with the signing, fine. If you cannot, then you you just have to leave. Hopefully that doesn't happen with you guys. Okay. Uh, which one? Which is? Are we here? Yeah, right there. What do you do when you uh, when you never seen a document before? Do you read it and then tell them, "I'm scared." Uh, they will know. I don't know this document. This is what I say. Um, I say, "I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with this document. Please go ahead and take a look at it and sign." Guys, don't think too much. I'm telling you, keep it simple. In a lot of these yeah. documents, like when she's going through them. Um, I mean, they are, you'll see a lot of the things are bold. So yeah. you'll, like the title is bold. And then the important information that the that the borrower or the signer needs to know is already bolded. So you can, you can literally just read off yeah. this title, this of what the document is on this date yeah. and going to whoever. Um, so it's, it's almost like, um, <laughs> I guess, summarized for you just in the bolded. But the yeah, easiest thanks. way, like if you don't know it and if you don't find the bolded ones, like Shelby is saying, you tell them you're not familiar with this document. Uh, Rico, did you ask a question earlier? I'm sorry, I missed I missed it. Um, you're welcome. OK, I thought I saw his name before. You need loan origination training. No, un ugh, no, no. Unless you want to be a lender. If you want to be a lender, sure. I, 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 okay, I don't have any loan origination training, so, but I've done uh, quite a few signings and I'm legally doing them. Under duress. Yes, you're right. Under duress. They don't shouldn't be under duress. Uh, what do you do when you get Thank a document? <laughs> you just asked again. Oh, okay. Um, uh, thank you. you. You're welcome, Dylan. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> don't be scared trust me um i think the signers are more scared than you are sometimes so just know that they are just human beings and just know that um they won't eat you <laughs> <laughs> all right valerie thank you so if there are no more questions we are gonna sign off guys if anyone is typing a question go ahead and put an emoji so i know what to wait um, you're welcome, Sadia. I hope I'm saying your name right. 
can you one day do a screen sharing and show documents to us and point where you need to sign please um it's kind of difficult uh, but you know if you go if you go to my um my other mock signing i have shown most of the documents that i can most of these documents contain personal information of the signers so i don't feel that it is safe for me to show them on this uh, on on the youtube feed yes sadia thank you because i know i i, I say the sadia and then uh, it could be Sa sadia or saria and i don't want to mess it up all right guys anything else um hey if you want to get the journal uh, i'm going to post a link and also please make sure um so what i did was um i started a facebook page just so that i can because every day i think of things that i want to share but it's not really yeah. practical for me to um make a full youtube video all the time so i want to just be have the ability to post something really quick on my facebook page or um or if people want to ask questions like if you come across something we are part of some facebook groups that you know people are at a signing or going to a signing tomorrow and they have a question they post it and there's so many people there they get a quick answer so please join my facebook page um and also the tiktok that is another thing is i've started just literally i'm at a signing and i learned something new and i will make a tiktok about it um so it i think a lot more information comes to the tiktok um and the face the facebook page i just started yesterday so go ahead and join that and go ahead and join the tiktok uh, or follow me on tiktok and that way because the youtube shorts are just 1 minute long like how what can i say in 1 minute i'm i talk too you. much <laughs> so if yeah so if 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 i want to post something i need the 3 minutes on tiktok so please follow yeah. me on tiktok on loan signing agent academy and the facebook page is called the loan signing agent uh, group the loan signing agent group and Where and make sure you it? like this uh, video please would give me a, uh, yeah i think i i'm going to put the description and edit it and it's also in my uh, youtube profile but please please give me a few likes um please share my content please follow me i would really appreciate it i don't sell you anything um well i i i'd sell the journal on amazon but no i'm never going to sell you a course <laughs> never hey uh rico had a question What's and Sadia complimented you. She said, you're not old, you're pretty. You're oh, nice yay! <laughs> my my son said I'm old. So, okay, where's oh, Rico? Rico, Rico. where's Rico? I'm in Seattle. And having issues with the physical address for my LLC. Any advice? Um, on Google, you can get, um, on Google, you can get, um, oh, yeah. what's that called? A, um, you can get an address. Yes. Um, um, either you can get a PO Google. box or you can, it's, it's like it's, Google Business, right? What is it? No, on, on Google, it's it's like a internet address. It's not a real ad, a physical address. So research that I've never. Business? No, Google Business is a page. Okay, that's one more thing. Uh, Google Business, Shelby. Let me talk about Google Business. You can get a lot of general notary work by just um, starting a Google Business page. Let me finish finish, finish what I was saying to Rico. That um, virtual address virtual address oh my god you're so good okay virtual okay, address rico. rico said it yes rico there you go you already know the answer to your question we are missing some questions but no, okay we're not. We're not. okay so um if you get a google business page um it's it's free um i'm telling you you can make a lot of money in general notary don't just focus on loan signings and again i made a TikTok about what are the other ways of income by being a notary signing or by being a notary public so that's why you should follow my uh, TikTok. But um, I have made $100 for a 5 to 10 minute appointment uh, for general notary work. And I just had to drive like 5 or 10 minutes. So a lot of people will call you. Make sure that you uh, search engine optimize your um, website if you have one. But um, I think I get more phone calls from um, my Google business page than my website. OK, what did we miss? Okay, um, just do you use your personal cell number for signings? Okay. Huh? Do you What's use that? your personal cell number? For no, signings? I have a Google Voice. I can give it to you and nobody can. Well, yeah. 
I, I use my Google Voice number, but signing services, I do give my uh, business number, my personal number. Thanks for the training. Ter terrain, um, did I say your name right? Terrain, thank you. Um, yes, that helps. I, please leave this live on your channel. Yes, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to update the description. By the way, you're not. <laughs> okay, we already read that. Loan signing academy. No, loan signing agent academy. And uh, so the TikTok is, let's see if I can bring it up. The TikTok is called. Oh, gosh. No. Okay. Okay, the TikTok is called Loan Signing Agent Academy. Loan Signing Agent Academy academy and that's that's my picture on it and uh, my facebook page is called uh, the loan signing agent group the loan signing agent group sorry yes says when you use google voice we can't tell if it's spam or a signing agency <clears throat> Mm. But oh. you would get spam calls just as easily on your regular phone. It's no different. I have used Google Voice for two years now, more than two years, and no issue. Okay, let's see. But I'll I'll link the Facebook page and everything on um, on the description. But it's a brand new page. Like I said, I created it yesterday, so it may not. The Loan Signing Agent Academy. Oh, the loan signing agents group. It looks like this. Hmm. What? I have two members? I didn't even invite anybody. Invite me. Invite. invite. Okay, I will. I know Hardy Hindi too. Hey, who, who does? On the name, thank you, Google Voice. Answer it though. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know Urdu and Hindi. I love Urdu. Oh, Shukriya. She said, "How sweet." On the name, thank you, Google Voice. Answer it though. <laughs> I was joking, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? I will answer it if you offer me a, a loan signing. <laughs> answer. Are you seriously calling me? Like, is that what you're saying? Answer the Google number? What are you saying, Terrain? Are you calling me? I, my phone's not ringing. Okay, guys. Anything else? I think we should get going. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. Again, make sure to check out my journal uh, on Amazon. Make sure to join my TikTok. And make sure to... Um, follow the facebook page so that we can build a community um, of helpers there subscribe on the name thank you google voice answer bye bye <laughs>